Hello everyone. How is everybody doing today? It is Wednesday and today I am here with project number two, whoopsie, sorry, in the Wildly Flowering series. So while I give you guys a minute to hop on, I am going to just get everything pulled up on my end um, so that <laughs> I just got a text here, so that tells me I need to turn my volume down so that I can make sure the volume is down and that the live is working. It looks to be there, so hopefully all is good on your end. There we are. We are just a little bit crooked, so let's try to fix that. I apologize. There goes Ruby. We'll see if we can get this fixed just a tad. There we are. Okay, all right. Sorry this took us a bit to get going here. We are a hub of activity, or not a hub of activity, but we got lots going on today. Hi, Linda. We have had appointments throughout the day. We have one at work, he has to give someone a ride. They've got to get to musical theater. We have some deliveries to do, I have a class to do, but I wanted to hop on and make sure to get project number two done for you guys so that I don't get too far behind with the wildly flowering series of cards. So this one, I should have brought in card number one, which hmm, I will have to grab that in a minute. But um, first, I will show you card number two. So card number two today, hi from Portage, Linda is going to be so if you do hop on just say hello let us know where you're watching from card number two is a moody mauve card and i have actually used the leftover pieces from yesterday's which is why i need to show that one to you so just bear with me one second i'll be right back Okay, we are going to just grab card number one, which is this one here. So yesterday's card was kind of like an opposite color palette to today's card. So I used a bit of the Moody Mauve in here. It's a different DSP than this one, but I used a little bit of the Moody Mauve here. And then today's card is a Moody Mauve base. Now yesterday's card, when you use these dies, I'm going to just bring these in and show you you get this one here is one of them and this cuts the frame i was telling you guys this yesterday you get the frame and you get the insert as two separate pieces so i had leftovers from yesterday's and i didn't want them to just go to waste so i decided to reverse them for today and then i cut a different insert which is this one here so i actually cut this one out of yesterday's border and then i used the border again so some similar elements, just kind of a different color palette. And then I brought in some of the floral image or the weeds, floral, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> so we're going to make this one today. And I just wanted to be sure to show you that. I will quickly show you my in color cards again as well. And if you are new to this series, I am Alana Wharf, Sleepless Stamper. I am from Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been offering in Color Club since May, and each month we fe feature a different stamp set. So for August, we are featuring Wildflower Designs, and I try to give my club members another week-long series of lives, as well as for you guys, so that they can get extra inspiration and an opportunity to earn extra cards. So hi, Ramona. So they have extra ideas. These are the ideas that I am creating with them tonight. So we're going to make these two cards and this is the thank you card that they are getting. I actually really love how these turned out. These were, I told you guys yesterday that I thought it was Helen Reed and that was accurate. So I drew some inspiration from some cards she had shared with this stamp set. And we're going to do these tonight with my club. And so they can also refer to these videos for extra ideas. Hey, Kathy, how are you? So this is card number two in that series. I offer the same for my stamp club. So I will be doing um, week-long series featuring whatever stamp set we use in my regular stamp club too. I just want to show you these dies real quick. 
I love this set of dies. So you get this large frame. We are using that as a mask tonight. And then you get that frame and then this insert as well as one that goes with each of the flowers or weeds, whatever they are. And then this one here that I'm going to use for this image. So that is the dies. And this is the stamp set that coordinates. I used the thank you again today, but I'll be sure to use. Yes, we're doing okay here, Kathy. It's just been a bonkers day, but it's good. Um, so I used the thank you again, but I'll make sure I use some of the other step or greetings throughout the week for you guys as well. All right, let's get started. So I have pre-cut a Moody Move card base. It is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I forgot to cut my white liner, so I will have to do that. I have a scrap of early espresso, which I will measure for you guys. And I'm going to just get that trimmed down real quick while we're here. May as well do that on the go. It's going to be five and a quarter, I want to say by one and an eighth. Yes, five and a quarter by one and an eighth. So I will get that one ready right now. I have the fan going in here. So I'm gonna have to direct it somewhere else. It's blowing paper all over. So we'll just aim it slightly away from my desk. There we go. Okay, so five and a quarter by one and an eighth for this one. And then I have the frame in white, the insert in pebbled path, which is in this DSP. I have a scrap of crumb cake for this piece here, and then I am going to quickly prep these little strips and this one here and this piece here for you guys. Now, while I have this though, let's get the um, basic white. <coughs> oh, oh, sorry. Hi, Shell, how are you? And Teresa, I have not seen you for a while. I think we need to plan another demo training day. What do you think? If anyone else that is a demonstrator is up for that and in the Manitoba area, let me know. We did our one last September on photography and um, we haven't had a chance to plan another one. Sorry, I'm just opening another pack of cards to talk. So we should uh, talk about that. I have some ideas. There was one that we were going to do, so I just need to see if we can still swing that one. So this is a four by five and a quarter. You are well, and yes, that's good. Have you um, been stamping with holiday catalog stuff? All right, so four by five and a quarter is the liner. So we have that. The same measurement is going to be for this layer of this beautiful pink, which is on my trimmer already. Here we go. So I just need to check where your view is so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So now you can see here that I cut, I'm just gonna take this out so you can see, I cut this piece here already. Bring that up where you can see it. Now I'm gonna continue on with this section here so that I can get the best use out of my paper. So I think I might need to move this up a little bit so you guys can see. I am going to line this up along the track where I've already cut and that's going to bring this edge here to four and a quarter. So that's where I want that. I'm going to close, slide my blade up, close this and I'm going to slide this down. It's at five and a quarter. So I need to come down to 10 and a half. That's where this piece is. And 10 and a half will give me the five and a quarter that I need. Now I need to just check where five and a quarter is. That's going to be tricky. Okay, so we're going to flip this this way and bring this to five and a quarter. So this is just the back side of the piece I'm cutting. So that edge is to five and a quarter. Now I can bring my blade down to that four inch mark. And oopsie, there is the piece that I need. All right, now I'm going to just grab a scrap of this paper here. I used this paper, this um, 
pack of paper when I was doing the Changing Leaves series of cards as well. Yes, there's so many good new products. I just wanna check my bag of scraps before I cut this one because they're a little bit bigger. So it looks like I might have a piece that will work to save me from cutting into this one. Hi, Cindy, how are you? All right, let's see. Bring this card back in. Yes, so I can get away with using this one. So I'm gonna save this. Um, I do need, I don't think it's gonna fit my die cut label that I need to do, but we'll test it out. Yeah, it's gonna be way too small. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera here. That's not gonna fit. So we do need to bring in a larger sheet of this pattern. You can tell I love this pattern, everyone. But we need a larger piece so that I can cut this label here. Hi, Christine. Okay, we're gonna move this aside. I've gotta bring back in my cutter. And just like yesterday, I am going to do exactly the same thing because I cut the same label yesterday. And this line's gonna go to the two. This is the same principle as with my, this layer here where I put the edge over to as far as I needed and then just add it on from here to here to determine how much to cut. So I was three and a quarter down the first time to die cut this from, now I need to go to six and a half. There we go. I like to try to use my paper efficiently. So now this edge goes to three and a quarter. I can bring my blade down and slice up to that two inch mark there. So there we are. I have enough to die cut my label for the card. So let's grab the mini machine and we're gonna place this here. I'm gonna put the paper down. I know that I need to go to one end because my other cutting plate has a crack in the middle and I need to make sure that the solid part of my plate will fully cover this. So right there's the crack. This part here will fully cover that. So that's why I placed this so far off to one end of my platform. And then we can just give that a push and run that through. I love this little collection of dies. All right, there we go. So that is all done. And now we just need to cut this little piece here to give me these little strips here. They are one inch by, I'm just gonna grab my little cutter. I'll just cut this in half and that will be enough. So this is three. So I'm going to cut one and a half inches. Just split that in half and now I have enough to fill the gap or to put on the end, sorry. So I'll just give you guys a quick idea in case you're new and haven't seen what I do with this. I don't like to use a full strip all the way across when there is an element like this that is going to hide the middle. Why waste all that DSP? So I usually just cut enough to go on either side and then we are good to be a little bit more conservative with our paper. Okay, so we have that. Now I need to stamp on this and I also need to stamp on this and then I will also stamp on this layer here. So we're gonna move these over and we will get our stamping done. Okay, so I have Memento ink we're gonna just ink that up. Sorry if you get a little camera shake. So we'll stamp that there. Now, actually before I do this one, we will also stamp right here. I'm just going to put a little scrap sheet underneath there. Just so I don't get ink all over my glass mat. It'll wipe off, but just save a step. This is gonna go right there. There we are. So we're all done with that image. And now we are going to use the thank you. And um, we are also going to use 
one sec I just got to clean that off we are also going to use there we go I don't know where I was going with that now I feel like I stamped a little crooked last time so I'm gonna take my thank you off and show you guys I'm just gonna move that for a minute how I line this up so hopefully I can do this without sticking my head right in your view Okay, so what I do is I put my block straight along a line and then I can kind of see the line that would follow along the bottom of the thank you greeting there. So looking through my block, I have just gone up on my tippy toes to try to not get my head in your way. And I am looking through the block, following a grid line that I see in there and I'm gonna try to line that grid line up with the bottom of the thank you. Now remember, my block is square or lined up straight to the grid. Then if I put my greeting down straight to the grid, if I stamp, when I stamp, if I line my block up so that it is straight or parallel to the paper, this should work and then my greeting should be straight. So now I am making sure that my, this has a little curl in it, so I just need to get that out. Um, my label is straight now along the grid. So now I can ink up my stamp and I am going to see, I wanted to tilt that, that looks straight to me, but I need to remember to line up my block so that it's parallel with the lines and then my greeting should be straight. And that is probably why my other one jeepers I really want to tilt it let's see if this works everybody there we go see it's straight as much as I wanted to tilt it it's actually straight okay so that's good for that we are all done with the stamping now let's do some coloring so I'm just going to close this up I have just gone very simple with the coloring here I'm just going to color with moody mauve light and crumb cake dark and I'm going to just fill in these little blooms or blossoms, weeds, whatever they are. I feel like this may be Queen Anne's lace. I might be wrong. If you know, please do tell me the names of these flowers. I love flowers, but I do not know nearly them all, especially not when it's a stamped version. So if you happen to know, please tell me what these are. There is a, oh gosh, I can't remember where I saw it. Somebody posted some pictures. I think it was BC. And somebody posted some pictures of like a purpley pink Queen Anne's lace. It is so pretty. I would love to have that. <laughs> so I'll have to... Um, hunt for some of that. I don't know if it's common and I just didn't know about it, but that's on my wish list. There we go. So that is one. Now let's do the other one. This one's going to be colored on the crumb cake. And I actually love how some colors look colored on colored cardstock, like on smoky slate or crumb cake or basic beige maybe even some of the lighter colored cardstocks that aren't neutrals. It can be a nice change and a nice effect to color on colored cardstock. I am not doing any shading on these. I am just very gently coloring them in with the Moody Mauve and that is it. So no in-depth shading today. I will pop my head up in a moment to check if there's any comments or any answers on this type of plant. There we go. Hello everybody who joined in while I was head down coloring. Now I'm gonna use the bullet tip of my crumb cake. Oops, I went out of the lines, but that's okay. And color in the stem. There we are. And perhaps it should have been green, but I actually did do green initially on here and then I switched it to crumb cake. So hopefully you guys don't mind that. Now I just need to trim this off and then we can run this one 
through the mini machine there to die cut it. There we go. Now we've got that and we're gonna move this aside just for a moment so that I don't crush that underneath the die cutting machine. And we'll get these guys out of the way. I should have taped this on first. So what I like to do is line up my image and then tape it. So we're gonna put that there. How many of you have, hi Jerry, the mini stamp cut and emboss machine? I certainly do like using it for a lot of things like this, especially when I have help with prepping. It's nice to have more than one and more than one size. I think I, I have two of the large machine, but most people don't need that. If you're prepping for other people, then it's nice, but if you have helpers, because if it's just you, you probably can't run. If it's just one person, you probably can't run them two machines at one time. Okay, so we'll bring back in all of our elements. And actually, there's one more thing I may as well do before I assemble. And that is this here. So I also have the SU100. It's from the Neutral Tones, I believe it's called. I have some rubbing alcohol handy to clean my surface and move that up a little bit. And I am going to cut off about 10 inches. There we go, this is linen thread. I wanted something darker. I didn't want to just slap linen thread on there. I did with yesterday's. And if you earn these card kits this week, you absolutely can just use your linen thread as is if you want. But there was so much of the kind of crumb cake, linen colored look in here that I decided, well, for this one, I'll color it. So I'm using the brush tip of my blends marker and you need to be very careful with this that you just go gently on the side. I'm just color of the side of your brush tip. I am not going too close to the end because I don't want to fray the end of my marker. There we go, roll that over. Try and make sure you get the different sides of the linen thread and then roll this over. The holiday catalog, when it releases, it does have some extra linen thread. I can't remember if they call it specialty linen thread or what the name of it is, but it has a navy, I think it's garden green and Cajun craze. Those, however, did not match this card, but otherwise I would maybe have grabbed those. But if you're doing other projects and those would coordinate, you could always use those rather than having to color them. But your linen thread is also great to color, and then you can have custom linen thread in any color that you have blends for. All right, there we go. So that's all cleaned up. You can't, with the alcohol, in that marker there, you just can't wipe it up with stamp cleaner. You need a rubbing alcohol. So, and I did it on my glass mat rather than a piece of paper so that the paper doesn't absorb any more of the ink out of my marker than I would need for the linen thread. There was a little bit of waste, but paper would definitely soak it up a lot faster. I am going to just let this dry, so I'm not gonna tie my bow just yet. Alrighty, now let's put the liner on the inside of the card first. That way it gets out of the way and I don't get anything on it. So I'm going to just use my Stamp and Seal Plus. When you're using your Stamp and Seal, just go down straight and don't rock and roll. Just go straight and pull and lift and then you should get good coverage without it twisting. I know that some people can really struggle with that one. That's my best advice. It seems to work for me, but I know that it can be a little bit of a struggle to get used to. So that's gonna go on the inside. And now we are going to work with the front. So first of all, I'm going to glue my little pieces of DSP to the corners or the edges of this one. I'm just gonna use my Tombow for that. While I glue this, if you are interested in receiving this week's card kits, which is the Wildly Flowering, you can do so with a $65 purchase using this host code. 
or if you're local you can contact me and I can add it to an order that I have going in I do have to submit another order this month before it ends I can't believe August is almost over and it makes me so sad I am never a fan of summer ending and the boys going back to school Lennon is going into grade 12 which is bonkers to me and Ethan third year university so I'm gonna miss having well Lennon has worked the summer just not as much as Ethan and Ethan has been working full-time so I mean I'll miss both of them but Ethan has already been away so much of the day time hours okay so this looks I'm gonna have to trim a little bit so I'm gonna glue this down first and then I can trim the ends to just even it up. And just remember when you're using Tombow, you really just need a really thin bead. You don't need a lot. Okay, so we're gonna just make sure that's down. And you can see here, there's just a little bit of extra of the early espresso sticking out. So I wanna just trim that up. Yeah, so I was saying, sorry to get sidetracked there. You can earn this week's kits with a $65 purchase. You just need to either place your order online or contact me. And if you place it online, please email me and say, I would like my order to qualify for the Wildly Flowering Card Kits. And then I'll know to prep you a set of these supplies. So that would begin with yesterday's and then today's, and then we'll have three more to go. And you have until today, if you want to earn the card kits from, oh gosh, see, I go through these sometimes so quickly that I, need to remind myself last week was what was that called spotlight on nature have fun the boys are leaving for musical rehearsal um spotlight on nature so i will see if i can grab those quickly at the end to show them to you usually we don't have overlap but because i only finished those ones the other day there is a little bit of overlap so if you would like your order to qualify for spotlight on nature you can still do that up until today all right, so that is glued down now. Now, same as yesterday, we're gonna glue this one down next. And I tried to place this so that the line of the espresso um, lines up between these two here. All right. So we're going to just very carefully glue this we don't want a lot I thought I shut the ringer off on my phone I'm so sorry it is <laughs> dinging I must have just turned the volume down and not the actual ringer so this is just a super thin bead because this die has slots in it and you don't want it to seep through there plus you just don't need a lot okay so I'm centering this amongst the die and there we go i might have to erase a little bit of glue no we're good so this layer i glued right down you could dimensional that if you wanted to now this layer and this layer i'm going to glue together and then dimensional the cardstock layer so this is going to go down here I love this set of layering dies. Okay, now we need to dimensional. So we're gonna just put these on here. There we are. I just like to press them down first, make sure that they are nicely on there. There we go. Now I need to just go at my tippy toes again. I'm at a standing desk. If um, I don't know if I've said that very often. I like to try to stand while I am crafting. Not always, sometimes I design sitting on the floor <laughs> watching TV in the middle of the living room. And then it's a lot of back and forth, but that's okay. All right, so that is now dimensional. Then we're gonna dimensional this one so that it's overlapping the side here and then just kind of with the greeting tucked in there. 
It's amazing how these things just happen to fit because they have designed them well to do so. All right. Ah, that one wants to stick to my finger. Okay, so these are kind of like that so that nothing overlaps the edge and sticks down to the card. And now I will just tuck this one right in here. I feel like I should have done this one in some in colors too, just to see how that looked. Now that this linen thread, you can see, has dried, it's pretty firm. So I'm going to just find my bone folder actually. And to soften that up, I'm just going to take my bone folder and curl it like you would, um, you know that curling ribbon that you can buy? I'll have to look up if there's another way to help soften this, but um, that curling ribbon like you would use on balloons. It definitely makes it a little easier to tie your bow because it's more firm. Now, that's not even, whoopsie. You don't want to knot. How I did that, I don't know. But, let's see, oh, there we go. Let's get that out. I'm gonna go closer to one end, I think. Let's see, there we go. That should be a little more even. Sorry, my voice trails off a little bit when I get concentrated. <laughs> there we are. So now we have a nice, it's kind of like early espresso and you can give it a little curl. I'm gonna try one thing here. I don't know if this will work, but let's try. I am going to see if curling it around my, if I could grab a hold of it. It's quite windy out here today. There we go. That gives it a little bit of a curl. So we're gonna do that. And then that way it's not quite so straight of tails. And I'm gonna do that one one more time. It's kind of like a curling iron. There we are. Now we've got slightly curly tails, which I like. If you don't like them curly, you could skip that step. Now I'm just sticking that to a glue dot. And if your glue dot is too big, you can just kind of squish it behind the knot. And then I'm going to just tuck this right in here. There we are. So that is my chocolate colored bow to go with it. I better cover up this glue. And I need to grab my embellishments, which are hiding under my scrap paper and we are going to embellish. I chose to use the same ones as yesterday. I just love these. They are called adhesive back textured dots. You will get whatever you need from me in your card kits to create your card. So if I have used these, I will give you these unless something happened where there was a drastic um, back order, I would possibly have to sub out for something similar, but to the best of what I can, you get what I've used on my cards. So I won't color this one for you, but I'll give you the piece of linen thread and so on. So you'd get everything that you need to make those and you just let me know by the end of today, if you decide to order today, whether you want the Spotlight on Nature cards or whether you want the Wildly Flowering cards. Now just give me one moment and I will grab the Spotlight on Nature card so I can give you guys one more refresher. So hang tight. Okay, my apologies, sorry to leave you hanging. All right, so we're gonna do a quick review of Wildly Flowering, of what we have so far.
So far we have cards one and two. So these would be the first two cards in the series that you would get the supplies for. Thank you, Linda, that's so nice of you. So cards one and two of Wildly Flowering. Some extra inspiration for you that my In Color Club is making with me tonight are these three here. You could do these in any color. I will make these in the lineup of In Colors. Hi, Alexina. And um, I think there's so many other colors. I should try one of these with one of the colors from this suite. I think that would look so pretty. All right, and now your order today can qualify for Wildly Flowering or today is also the deadline for the Spotlight on Nature series of cards. So this is card number one, card number two, card number three, which I will include the little strip. I've got Magnus on my card, which I had on there for taking photos. Um, card number three, I will include the supplies for this strip in both Berry Burst and Flirty Flamingo. This is Calypso Coral, but the strip is Flirty Flamingo. So you would get one set of the supplies, but two sets of strips. So that's card number three. Card number four. And card number five. So those are the five cards that were technically the last series, but the order deadline for these ones, if you're in Canada, is today. So by midnight tonight, if you choose to place a $65 order with this host code or by contacting me, then you can still choose either these cards or these ones here. So you would just need to let me know. And then after today, the order qualification will go towards the wildly flowering because after today we'll get prepping these ones for everyone who qualified. So then those ones would close. But that is the ordering special for today or the ordering special options for today. And then um, tomorrow we move on to the strictly wildly flowering. So hopefully you will tune in tomorrow. I will, sorry, I have the hiccups, be back with Card number three, I will post to let you know what time. We have a host of other, like a list of other appointments tomorrow. So tomorrow will probably be evening rather than daytime, but I'll confirm and let you guys know. And I'll try to give you more than an hour's notice. Today wasn't looking very hopeful. And then I thought, no, we're just gonna squeeze it in real quick before my class so that um, we don't have too much to catch up on between Thursday and Friday and the long weekend. So anyhow, I will be back tomorrow. I will post the time. And um, if you do want to register for the Stamping Cross Country Retreat, you can still do so. The early bird pricing is now over, but you can still register. And I have shared the link on my page again yesterday, but if you want it sent to you for easy access, just let me know. You can sign up for this in Canada and get all the product included, or you can sign up worldwide. If you are in another country, you just would get the digital version only. You can join us on the Facebook page and watch the classes live and you just wouldn't get all of the um, paper products and things like that if you register from out of Canada with me. If you register with someone in the U.S., you can get the paper products if you want to make the cards along with us. So that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and supporting my lives. It's lots of fun to have people there to stamp along with. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye, everyone.